Allen, and it is Wednesday night, obviously. Hello, John, and uh, Janine Pettit is our guest tonight. Hello, Janine. Hi, everybody. So this this is your second time on the show. Yes. And my, do and my dogs are barking, so they must the dogs are barking, so they must approve <laughs> of your of your coming on. That happens to me all the time. The minute I get on the phone or start recording the podcast, the dogs are barking. Right. It's, it's like they know you're doing something <laughs> important, so we'll we'll bark now. Right. John, what's new this week? Anything? Well, you know, Bob, very interesting. Um, last weekend, my wife and I on Friday went out to up to Ontario to see a show with our friend Michelle Wright, who, by the way, said, say hello to Bob. Say hello to Bob for him. Yeah, that's all um, up there. A country music star in Canada who had a number of hits in the U.S. as well. But uh, I worked with her a long, long time ago, so we went to see her show. But the interesting aspect of what I'm trying to say is the number of RVs that we saw heading south. Didn't see any <laughs> heading north. Uh, yeah, I wonder why. A lot of them them had Canadian plates, I mean, Ontario plates and Quebec plates. And they were heading on Route 81, which is the direct north-south route that parallels 95. And my guess is that they were all hauling cars and um, they had stuff on top of the cars, et cetera. They were heading north. They were getting out of Dodge and, uh, and heading south I mean, for south. the winter. And there is a yeah. large number of Canadian snowbirds in the RV industry. And um, yeah. I think like December 1st is pretty much their, their time when they head for Florida. Time to go. Now, Janine, you're down in Carolina someplace, so you probably saw a lot of them heading that way, too. I, I did. We saw a lot when we were coming down here. And for a lot of people, North Carolina is the stop. You know, you it's pretty mild here, although they'll get snow. But um, I've had a girlfriend boondocking in my driveway in her Class B for the last month. And I, I actually came down here before her, but she's down here now. And this is as far as she's going. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, she figured, hey, if she's, if yeah, she's this is, living it up free in your yard, why go any further? Yeah. <laughs> so, got some uh, early, early sign ups. We got Scott Nichols with us. Hello, Scott. And uh, Jesse's on tonight. So, uh, hi, Jesse. Jesse, Jesse happy just birthday, had his, Jesse. I know he, he celebrated he just, a birthday. He had just had his 50th birthday, right, Jess? His 50th He's birthday. <laughs> and um, I, might, I might be a decade off, but. Um, Nevertheless, yeah, um, we so have really you're truly introduced Janine. We have her up on the screen and she's talking and stuff like that, but we need to give her a formal introduction, unless you have other announcements that you want to make about uh, upcoming events, like tickets for the nope. Boston show being well, available. We got, we, yeah, let me, uh, let me just put that up. That's a good point. If we could, if I can do this without... In the meantime, I'll say hello to Alan Warren, who was joining us from Texas. A oh, thanks, Alan. Alan. Oh, yeah. Lisa was on last I week. I did his camp, Alan. You did what? Oh, at his, at his place in Texas? Yes, big chief. I finally made oh, it down. This finally made it down. Time. We were going to go down there last couple summers ago, and yeah. Alan was smart enough to convince us to not go to Texas. In the in summer? July. In yeah. July. So we know some other Houstonians as, as well that have said, you know what, you're welcome to come on down, but don't be foolish in coming down at this time of the year. Well, well you we, were just down there, Janine. Please. Yeah, but, but that's in December, not in July. Yeah. So uh, Janine was just down there at, uh, with uh, Terry Cooper in Nevada and did a uh, camper college at NRVTIA, right? Yes, we did. We did a uh, three-day, 16-hour classroom seminar. It was fantastic. Good. All right, quick, quick commercial. If uh, you're watching and you have not entered our contest to win four tickets to the Boston RV and Camping Expo, please do so on our page. Our winner last week was Estelle Drew from Newmarket, New Hampshire. And Estelle's a lucky lady because she also won our contest back in April when we were doing some sponsorship and she got a $100 gift certificate to Lee's Family Trailer Sales. So uh, she's a lucky winner on the first week and we draw every Sunday morning. 
uh, I think you bring in so many interviews. I didn't realize that we had interviewed her at the Boston RV show. Right, we did. Yeah. yeah. Back in so January. we got uh, uh, somebody a fan club on here tonight. Uh, I hear Helen's comment. That's very nice of you. <laughs> yeah. Mark, I don't know Mark how to take that. How to take that. <laughs> Where am I getting the feedback? <laughs> We're getting Mark feedback. Mark. Mark and Dawn. We love Mark and Dawn. Yep. Yeah, Ellen Warren, Diane Mac, Diane Mac, the mayor and Ron. Nice to see you there, Diane. It's always nice to have you there. And Ginny, Ginny McKinney, she is one of the Girl Camper Guides. She's our Girl Camper Guide to West Virginia. Ah. We're going crazy now. Yeah. Anybody our here? Is going crazy. Huh? Our sound is going crazy with feedback. Yeah, I know. Oh, so, no, we're not. Now we're not. Janine was the only one who wasn't on feedback, and then we started getting some garbling. Sometimes, that, sometimes that's where it comes from. But Janine, talk again. Make sure we're not getting any feedback. Well, I hope I'm not the cause of it because I will nope. be no help fixing it. Nope, you're not. Well, look, at we've jumped <laughs> all over this. Why don't you take 30 seconds for the people who don't know who you are? Because they're probably sitting there saying, hey, they're talking like they're relatives at, around the Thanksgiving uh, table. But give them a little background on who you are and what you do. So I am Janine Pettit, and I am the founder of Girl Camper. Girl Camper is really a media outlet. We produce and uh, create content to uh, bulk up the RV lifestyle in the RV industry. We love getting outdoors. We love our being. Um, there's a weekly podcast. comes out every Tuesday, Rain or Shine. I just recorded episode 200. That's mind-boggling to me. And so, so I... I I didn't throw a party yet, but I think I'm going to have to do something to celebrate that. And we recently added um, 13 new Girl Camper Guides. So we're branching out across the country. And these are our little micro-influencers. They are creating content for the RV industry. These are women I know and have camped with and love what they're doing just as I do. And now they're encouraging and promoting and getting other women to come on board. But not just getting them to come on board, giving them the tools they need to learn how to do it and to do it safely. So we're a little busy. So Janine, okay. one of the big misconceptions I think is that people think you um, uh, you know, are single or a widow or whatever, but you're a happily married lady. And tell us the background because I think you have a very interesting backstory on how this um, girl camper thing got started. Well, you know, I grew up in a camping family and I really believe those memories we create when we take our children outside and we camp with them are different than any other form of vacation. And my parents took us to Disney World when we were kids, and but it was the camping that always stuck with me. I just loved it. Then I married a non-camper and I just figured that once you took a non-camper camping, he would love it too, but he didn't. <laughs> We, we we borrowed our neighbor's pop-up and we went from New Jersey all the way up to Prince Edward Island in the Bay of Fundy. And we got home and we were cleaning out that camper in the driveway. And he said to me, thank God that's over. And uh, I mean, I just lost him. And um, he didn't he didn't love it. And so a couple he years later. He didn't even like it. <laughs> he didn't love it. He came close at all. He's a good sport, and he'll try anything once. But he was like, "I don't, I don't get it." <laughs> oh, is he banned to the lobby for the show, or is he there somewhere? No, he actually walked down to the lobby. He's um, banned. He went. He went down to the bar. He's in the lobby. <laughs> not, the lo not the lobby. He went. He went to the bar. <laughs> he's been watching me work all week. He's been Mister Girl Camper all week. So <laughs> he's been on this last interview, but. You know, when I found out that there was such a thing as girl camping, that there were all these groups out there and there were women and they were out there and they were camping and going places and doing things. And I told my husband, I said, look at this. This is a bunch of women. And they they just hook up these campers and go by themselves. And he he just took out his wallet and handed me a card. And he goes, where do I pay? I just want to, I'm never going to do this with you, honey. So please, you have my full blessing. And really, he's fantastic. My, I am really you, you still love him you're still married i do and you know what here's the funny thing and and i think this is a lesson in marriage as well as just you know your own personal life um 
all the time the kids were growing up, we were talking about when the kids are gone, we're going to get an RV and we're going to cross the country. And we rented an RV and we went on a trip and we were like six days into this trip. And he turned to me and he goes, I hate this. <laughs> and, um, is, he an, not, is he an engineer? Uh, no, but he's a home inspector. So close. Okay. So he's something with, with, it's either it's black or white. It's numbers. Yeah. Black or white. Yeah. Is, is, he going to is he going to compliment this home inspection business with an RV inspection business? I keep telling him. I said, get yourself down to Athens to right. be an inspector. Yep. But the reality is, you know, he is a guy who just likes his safety. Like, like he just likes, he's a guy who likes to be home. He's a steak and potatoes guy. He likes to come home. He, he's a, my husband's a landscape painter. He paints and oils. He relaxes down in his studio in the basement, and he doesn't like to paint on location. I, I have packed up all of his paints and taken them with us. He likes to do what he relaxes in the way he does, and I do, and I. But as a, a as a wife, like you have someone who changed the plan, you have a choice here. Like, am I going to just sit here and resent him, or just going to go? And I'm like, look, okay, you don't want to go. I'm going without you. And he's like, let's make sure you're safe. And he okay. learned everything with me. And, you know, he'll text me, where are you, girl camper? I'm, so, I'm in South Dakota. Will you be safe? Call me when you get there. <laughs> I mean, say, where are you, hub husband? He goes, I'm home in my recliner. That's right. <laughs> you know what? That's a fantastic deal for me because I have his full support. He thinks what I do is great. He loves that. He, well, and you know, I so, so, does, so does Alan Warren. <laughs> nice, nice comment okay, there. So we need to ask Alan. He wrote... Um, I love how she and her group show women how to become girls again now through camping and RVing. Alan, yeah. tell us what you mean by that, unless Janine, you know what he means by that. Um, I do know because so, Alan and I talk about this. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead. What does he so mean? Saying, and it's making girls out of women. So women wear a lot of hats, you know. You're taking care of children, and if you're like in my stage of life, uh, maybe um, your kids are on their feet, but you're, you have aging parents. You have all these responsibilities and hats you wear and you work, and then you get to this place where you know, like you take some time for yourself. Yep. And a lot of times with me, with women who want to join us, I find that the first job I have to do is not teach them how to tow, but teach them that it's okay that they take time for themselves because we're mm. so conditioned to yep. be taking care of everybody. So when we get off to camp, then it's like, it's our turn to be girls again. And we're sitting around the campfire and we're giggling and we're laughing and we're telling stories. And in fact, Alan, oh God bless him. I converged on him with all my tribe there about a month ago. And we had so much fun. I said, Alan, I want to host a girl camper camperine. And we're doing this at Big Cheap. In Camperie fact, we, or Camperette? Camperie. Okay. And it's, it's Camperette. That, I'm going to get in trouble for that one. but no, it's, not hey. it's that old school camp out. Like think of the movie, The Parent Trap. When, when you went to camp and you took little classes on whittling and woodworking and potholder weaving. Well, we set up a big uh, girl camper camperie. It's down at Allen's uh, place, Big Cheap, next April. And that's what we're doing. We're giving grown-up women a chance to be girls again, to okay. wake up in the morning I'll, and go to their let class. Let me ask you this. Like you said, women don't just have one job at home. Like men generally have one job at home. Mm -hmm. like women have to. And like you, you said, <laughs> if, you could have teenagers and older parents, or you could have married kids who have kids, so you're a grandma, but you might still have one of your parents still alive or, or one of the four grandparents still alive. So you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're like a human pinball. You're bouncing from one, one mental right. capacity to another. Basically what you're saying is that women go out and camp together. I'm, I'm presuming that there's wine involved. Sometimes, you know what? It's kind of a, you know, a lot of people like to joke about that. And I mean, W I N E, not W H I N E. No, you know what? Some people. Oh, am I dead it. yet? Am I dead yet? Beverage, but you know what? It's you know I I never want people to think it's just a bunch of women drinking in the woods because really this is a bunch of women really taking time to get to know each other and doing things for themselves and and kind of indulging. Like we say that there's no wrong way to camp like a girl, and what we mean by that is 
it's your time. Like that block, that 48 hours of the weekend, if you want to nap, if you want to lay in your bed, if you want to binge watch Netflix on the Wi-Fi, go ahead. If you want to hike, if you want to shop, you get to do whatever you want. All right, let, let me catch up on some uh, comments. Some, some of these comments, comments are cool. They're, they're coming fast and furious. Right? Diane Quayley's on. Uh, no, no, Audrey's no, that's on. Martin. Martin. Look at Margaritaville it. mom is weak. Oh, Audrey says she has a Margaritaville Mama's Weekend every year at Normandy Farms. Women only. Oh, Audrey, please invite me. <laughs> no, no, no. Maybe you can, you Don't can combine with Audrey because she just doesn't have wine. Thing. She has all so, those I'm, margarita machines. And, uh, Maria's on. She says, I, I love the storm. <laughs> Maria loves that your husband supports what you're doing. Alan's there, Maria. Lois, so excited for the Girl Camper Guide. Stacy McCarter, good evening from North Carolina. Laurie and Michelle are on from Two Gals and a Boston Brood. Oh, love them. Yeah. Este oh, Estelle is on. So didn't even catch you there earlier. Estelle, our winner is here. Just thank you guys. Can't wait for the show. Uh, Jose's on. He, you know, Jose Moniz is on with uh, Rolling on TV. We got the whole gang on here. We got, yeah. a, we got a lot of people from all over the country. Now, yeah, let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about the show. Bob, I on make, There's what? one thing going on here. There's one thing going what? on here. Okay, Mark Polk says hello. And Alan Warren says, hey, Mark. Now, I believe that it's illegal to have side conversations going on. If Alan Warren wants to talk, he should be talking to us and not to Mark Polk. So from now on, we're going to say when you're listening to our show or watching our show, no side conversations. Otherwise, Alan Warren, we're going to go back to stand in the corner. <laughs> Let's do that. Well, look, let me, <clears throat> let me make an announcement that I don't think most people know. Uh, one of the things I've talked to Janine about the last couple of years is bringing her into the Boston RV show, and it so happens that the schedules align properly this year. So Janine is coming to Boston. She's going to be doing seminars at the Boston show on Saturday and Sunday, um, and that's January 25th and 26th. While she's here, we're going to talk to some of our dealers. We want to find a couple of dealers to do her girl camper college on. And mm -hmm. we're going to talk to Marsha Galvin about some of the things that we might be able to do at Normandy Farms. You know, there's there's so many things now that we're going to have her get to Boston about. So any of you ladies who are out there, uh, you want to make sure that you you have friends that want to go camping, that they come in and listen to Janine's talk. And we're not 100% sure what she's going to talk about. I told her it's completely up to her. But I I'm sure you'll cover a lot of the same things that you talk about tonight and talk about maybe setting up chapters in New England. But uh, so welcome to uh, Boston, Janine. I, I Well, I went to college up there. So that's a little bit of a homecoming for where me. Where did you so go to college? Area. I went to college in New Hampshire. At where? Uh, I went to Notre Dame College in Manchester. In Manchester. Yep. Manchester, yeah. yeah. So Bob, <laughs> we should be perfectly clear to point out that when Janine comes to Boston in January, she will not be hosting an outdoor camp out during that time. Yeah. However, maybe, no, I was going to say, you can camp out in the in the convention center. No, you can't do that. It was only joking. That'd be a good idea, though, right? They wouldn't no, have to hire security guards. We can hang out in the RVs. Right, exactly, exactly. Until they... Till the security guards throw you out at nine o'clock at night. Well, you know, one of the you know we we made that promo up, and uh, we're coming up to the uh, nineteen minute segment, which means that John has to do. We'll do a quick, a quick sales pitch. And why can't I get my other? Can't get my share of Facebook to work. All right, John, well, you know, do your little quick I, I'll, I'll talk and you can figure it out and take the sample sign down and put the other one up. But this is the time in the show when we want to thank all, all of our viewers for taking time from their busy schedule. On uh, and In this case, it's live on a Wednesday night, but so many people watch us throughout the week at various times and at their discretion and their timetable. But we do want to ask if you would take the time to just hit somewhere on your screen, there's a button that says share. So if you share that, then you can uh, give a lot of other people who might not be able to watch it live the opportunity to see the show. 
We're happy to say that we're uh, averaging between six and 10, 11,000 people a week on this show. And uh, it's gaining some traction. We've been doing it just, you know what? It takes, Janine, I'm sure you'd agree. It takes a couple of years to get to get traction going. People. Uh, you, know, you know what? You, you get where you're going. I always tell this to my husband. You know, Girl Camper is four years old, or four yep. and a half years old. And I look at the growth we've had in four and a half years old. It was all base hits, John. There yep. were no exactly no home runs, all <laughs> base hits. Very interesting. Good analogy. Good That's analogy. Way to put it. Yeah. So take this yeah. time, folks. Uh, hit the share button. Send it on Facebook. Send it all over the world. And uh, like tonight, we've got people from North Carolina, Texas, uh, Arizona. Where else? We've got people from all over all the states in New England. We've got, uh, like I said, the Polks in North Carolina. And uh, well, well, one, uh, you, know, you know, two of the Polks now can't. Can't listen to what you said because uh, there's yeah, a side conversation. There's yeah. a no, there's a side conversation I going on with Don, go. Don and Michelle yep. and Laurie. Yeah, so and then right Mark, after you say Don, what does Dawn do? She gets on. She gets on with Michelle and Laurie. So. <laughs> okay, love. Oh, well, I do see that Maria is asking me if I'm going to the Florida Tampa show, and I'm not Maria because I'm going to be out at Quartzsite camping with. Uh, two beards and a babe. No, no, I'm just, two broads and a um, two two beers and a babe. <laughs> you know that is that is our friends Stephanie and Todd Henson from NRVIA. That's what they call themselves. What do they two call them? Two beards and a babe. Oh, so Todd has a big beard, and they yeah. have a dog with a beard. So that's right. the two beards, and right. Stephanie's the babe. So for a second, I spaced out there. But I'm going to be camping with Michelle and Lori at Quartzsite, doing some fun things with Roland on TV. So I won't be at Tampa, but our girl camper guide, Judy George, is going to be there in my seat, and she's going to be hosting some events. So we'll make sure you get connected to her. Mm, interesting. All right, so the reason the reason you were supposed to be talking tonight, and we, you know, we kind of passed it a little bit, is you were going to talk about some inexpensive Christmas gifts for RVers, and I know you're down at Campco, uh, yeah. and I think you told me you brought some back to the room with you. I did. You know, Campco. I love our friends at Campco, and Campco is a sponsor of the podcast, and I always want to thank them for that because. You know, you know, kind of like the whole influencer thing is new in the RV industry, not so much new now. So, you know, they were kind of leading the pack. So I thank them. And I went down to Camco this week because I had a new hitch put on my truck. And that is something I really wanted to have professionally done. Um, these hitches, the weight distribution hitch, they have a L iron bar and they shove up from underneath and a lot of times i just did not possess the arm strength the upper body strength to get that in well they make a new one now the r3 and it drops in from the top super easy to put on but there was no way i was installing that myself so i went down and i got a big factory tour we had so much fun and we did a go our being live there this afternoon and we did a whole kind of favorite pics of girl campers stocking stuffers because so many people belong to RVing groups and you might switch names and you have to send a 10 or $20 gift. So we went through and we picked out some fun things. So before you, before you do that, I want to mention that Campco is a very big name in the industry and everything that you show us tonight is probably available at any of our nerve to dealers because almost every dealer has several Camco displays. Every one of them buys something from Camco. So more than likely they can find what you're going to show us tonight yes. at, their, at their local nerd to dealer. And you know, we always laugh about this with Camco. People sometimes don't realize the name Camco, but everybody who's an RVer has Camco stuff. Right. Whether right. You know it's Camco or not. So you right. got it. So what you got? Okay. So how cute is this for a stocking stuffer? It's just a little nightlight in the shape of a little vintage camper it comes in two colors i of course took the aqua one home but you know what i loved about this one on the back the hook of the uh, plug rotates so if the plug in your bathroom and your rv is sideways you're not going to have a nightlight like that yep. it switches so you can have it up so I don't know. It's like twelve, fifteen dollars. What a cute that's thing! That's, that's right? very clever. Lots of times you buy that. I mean, something that simple, but you're right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
I always say that about Camco. They are always reinventing the wheel. They're always making a better mouse trap. This, this thing cracks me up. So this is a hitch ball cover. So we laugh about this. If you've ever experienced the pain of walking into your hitch. Everybody, you, everybody has. It's still going to hurt, but not as much. <laughs> so, I, I don't think, I don't think I've ever met anybody who hasn't hit their hitch. Yeah, saves, well, your knee, saves your knees. This is funny because when I was leaving today and I was walking through the Camco parking lot, <laughs> there was like 10 of these on the back of, up on the back of, of trucks there. So here's another little cute, simple thing. They were teasing me mercilessly today because believe it or not, I don't have this. This is the little leveler that peel and stick onto your camper on the front and the side. Can you believe I don't own one of these? But it's in the shape of a little vintage camper. It's the leveler. What a cute little stocking stuffer, right? Here is what I want to show all the grandmas. And John, I know you've got grandbabies. I see you on Facebook taking care of them. Mm -hmm. How cute is this t-shirt? Raised, Raised at, at the campsite. campsite. Raised huh. at the campsite. That's so they cool. came out with a line of kids' t-shirts. They have really great t-shirts for adults already. And I have the I have the flag one. You have the oh yes, my husband swiped that. Here's the flag one, but in the hat. In the hat, yeah. Yeah. So th they have really great baseball hats there, but this oh. is kind of my favorite thing this year. Hey, slow down, slow down, lady. We got a whole hour. <laughs> so, wait, wait, I, hold on. I, have, I know. I have, I, I have the flag T-shirt, and and I bought it at Flag RV. Oh, that's perfect. So you did mention grandbabies. I need prayers from everybody who's watching because I got two of them tomorrow from 10 to 5. Oh, a, so you need prayers for you. A two-year-old and a four-year-old. So anybody who's in New England doing nothing tomorrow, um, email me or message me, and I'll give you my daughter's address. I got two kids for four hours or six hours. Two and, and a um, two-year-old and four-year-old? A two and a four. I'll be around tomorrow. I'll be around tomorrow doing nothing, but I'm not okay, going to help you, baby. Come on, Bob. Come on over. Come on over. Go get Bobby. We'll uh, we'll get them all together. Bobby's in, Bobby's in school. Those days, I don't. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it when I was in it, and I don't have any grandchildren yet, and um, I have a big age gap in my kids. So when my youngest graduated from high school and I was at back to school night her senior year. I I was doing the math and it was my 27th year in a row at back to school night. So I'm completely saturated. <laughs> 27 years in a row. Wow, that's pretty cool. I was a big spread. That's Mark pretty cool. Polk says that they should call the uh, they should call it the girl camper weight distribution hitch. I think they should. I guess uh, the only thing left then is just painted pink then, right? <laughs> not on my camper. <laughs> I'm not one of those pink girls. But honestly, we did a great video on that. And it's it's really, really going to save a lot of shoulder pulls. And it's it really was unwielding the other way. It, it, it was so hard for me to get them up underneath that you know what I was doing? They died when I told them this. Pull the pin out and pull the entire hitch off with the bars on, lay it on the ground, and then get someone to help me pick it up and put it back in the hitch. I, I always found them difficult, you know, and I'm a guy. I, I always found that they, they, they are not the easiest things to work with. So when when is that video going to be available? And we're um, going to be able to post it on the uh, Nerve to Sight and on our Facebook page? It all comes out. So they're editing everything there at Camco. They have such a great team there. And we had fun yesterday, although it was raining cats and dogs. So we were in a, a steel shed garage, and every time we'd get ready to film, the rain, rain. Would bang, 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 it sounded like thunder. Now roof. you you mentioned you mentioned that you had a chance to go through the factory. Do they do factory tours like for consumers if they happen to be in the area, or, or were you no. just the VIP? You were just a VIP. No, I was the VIP. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Wouldn't you say it's more of a warehouse than a factory? No. That is a hands-on made in America factory. Are a lot are a lot of a lot of these things that you're you're showing us are these all made in America or many of them? Um, practically everything I think like 70% of what Campco makes is made in America, but they have all the plastic blow mold machines there. It was fascinating to watch that um, the tote tank, you know, for your a sewage or your 
your gray water, that tow tank, it's two giant machines. The, the big glob comes down in the middle and the machines come together and a couple minutes go by and it spits it out. And then someone from the factory takes an X-Acto knife and gets any little rough edges off of cool. it. It was right. amazing to watch. All of their levelers, the curved leveler, those things are made right there in that factory. It was so fun. That going injection to molding. That's the word, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they're big up here in Lemonster. You know, that's Lemonster Mass are... right up here is where they were made. The pink flamingos were made up here in Massachusetts for oh, really? years and years. They were they were invented here. Yep, right, right up here. Yeah, the so pink it's flamingo. not a warehouse. We went through the entire factory, and they employ a thousand people there. You where, know, and, where and, is it in North Carolina? In Greensboro. Oh, Greensboro. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, so we went through the factory, we got the tour, we talked to people who work there. It's immaculately clean factory. It was so fun because even on the factory floor, they're having a big Christmas decorating contest among the departments and the winners get paid time off. So the, I'm telling you, the competition was serious over there. It was spectacular what they were doing. It was so much fun. I'm glad mm. we were there at Christmas time. And I think it's important to point out that the gifts that you're showing are not necessarily women gifts for women. But mm -hmm. gifts that anybody can buy for anybody that just happen to be made yeah. for Camco, by Camco, for uh, for campers. And so. I chose things. Obviously, I'm not sitting here with a weight distribution hitch. But they started last two years ago a line called Life is Better at the Campsite. And they kind of got into a little bit of the RV lifestyle, the things that are fun. We joke that they got tired of talking about sewer hose <laughs> that rhino hose they got tired of talking about the rhino hose and they started a whole thing about lifestyle like to be to be walking around with your hat on when you're not RVing it's just promoting the RV industry it's putting that idea in people's head that uh you know RVing. Well, you Jeanine, as you continue to show us products tell us about how you um developed the relationship with Camco you know what? I kind of think back about this. I, I just met them at an RV show. I met them. You know where I met them? I met them down in Kentucky when we used to have the um, RV. Um, oh, in Kentucky, yep. Yep. So I just talked to them down in Kentucky and they sent me their big red fire pit. And when I first saw that big red fire pit, I thought, well, who goes to a campground and doesn't have like a real fire? You know, I, I thought it was kind of crazy when I first saw it. And then I started using it and a couple of things happened. One, I didn't have to keep buying firewood. Like firewood can get expensive. Sometimes it's wet. Sometimes you, you just can't get a good fire going. The other thing is uh, occupational hazard, I guess. I have terrible asthma. So I love being able to turn on the propane. And if I just want to sit for 20 minutes and enjoy a fire, yeah, I don't can do that. It doesn't take an hour to build and an hour to watch. Oh, it down. Right. So I use it on my back porch at home all winter long. So it's like not, it's a camping item specifically, but I use it at home on the back porch all winter. We can go out with a hot chocolate if it's one of those 50 ish degree nights, turn it on, sit there for 20 minutes, enjoy the heat, enjoy the flames, turn it off and come in. So I, I wrote them a glowing letter like, I love this thing. And then I ended up just, you know, they were asking me to test products and sending me things. And and then they just came on board and sponsored the show. So we've been working together for like close to three years now. Oh, that's great. Yeah, they, they're so much fun to work with. I didn't, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize they made most of that stuff in the United States. It's an 11 acre warehouse and factory. Wow. It's 11 acres. They gave us a tour and we were walking for two hours. My husband was in heaven. <laughs> I was like, I saw this last year. <laughs> but my maybe, husband, maybe, maybe, he'll, maybe he'll go camping now. You know what? He does like to camp now. So he, he'll go with me. Well, since I got my Max trailer, he was not a big fan of the vintage trailer, which was really a hard shell tent. Once I got that Max trailer, and it's got a full queen bed in it, I've got... 200 watts of solar on the top. No matter where I am, I everything works. You know, if we're boondocking, I've got hot water, I've got heat, I've got the pump, I've got air, you know, everything but air conditioning. So now he's like, yeah, I do kind of like camping. So he doesn't like to be far away and he doesn't like to be gone for a long time. But if I say to him, let's go for three days, he's he's all on board. 
Great. That's super. That's what, else you got? what else you got, girl? Oh, th so this is one of my favorite things. This is a bamboo cutting board. Isn't this adorable? <laughs> so what I liked about this, well, bamboo is so sustainable. You know, it grows very quickly. So this is the kind of wood we should be using. And it's got this nice lip going all the way around it. So if you're cutting something juicy, it'll catch it. And so I cut on this side, all my knife marks are on here, but if I wanna use it as a serving board, I turn it over, oh, I move my hand. In this corner right here, it's it's a wood stamp. It's a no. burned into it, you know, no. and life is better well, at the camera. Hold that, hold that right in the center of the camera there for a second, if you can see it, because we need to ask Mark Polk if that weight distribution is correct on that, because those wheels seem to be way too far in the back, and all the weight, all the weight mark is going to be on the hitch. Is that correct, or should they? Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's or should the wheel be up a little bit more? So, you know so, so Janine, if if you had a choice mm -hmm. in using that cutting board, would you use it to cut meat, or would you use it to cut vegetables? Oh, so glad you asked. I don't cut meat on this. I only cut, um, it's antimicrobial, so it yeah, will. You, you do eat meat, right? I do, yes. Do. I love and you like, you like meat, right? Love it. Okay, you're our girl. Okay. Yeah. okay we, mean, don't need, we don't need Dawn Polk anymore. We don't need Michelle. You pass our test. Right. Maybe if like Dawn Polk cut meat, I'd have Dawn's gorgeous skin. So, I mean, it's working for her, right? Dawn hasn't tried to convert you into uh, right. Mark. Mark says it's poor design. They have to move those wheels up wheel. closer yep. to the middle, the center of gravity on the. Uh, but look how clever this is. So this is the plastic ones, and this little tire pops out, and so you have a three kit. <laughs> so these are just the plastic. You can throw these in the dishwasher, wash them in the sink. So this is what I would cut meat on. That's and so for fanning there, yourself as well. Yes, there's three of them in a pack, and you get this cute little rubber tire, and you put them back together here, and it's just a cute thing to have in your camper. They, You can hang them on a hook off this little thing, and they're very easy to wash. And then when I'm serving cheese and crackers on this, I know meat hasn't been cut on it. Ballpark price. This is under 20. Okay. Yeah, and I think that I, yeah, you can't, see, the thing is, Camco is a manufacturer. So they have all different kinds of distributors who can price them however they want. Okay. Yeah. So it's hard to tell you. I, I mean, I could look up their suggested manufacturer price, but I know that the cutting board is with something like $24.99. I got this last spring and I used it like crazy this year. Well, Susie, says, Susie, Susie says, says you, you make, make the best steak. steak. Wait a minute. Come again. <laughs> Susie oh, says you make the best steak. Oh, she's a great cook. So Susie is our Pennsylvania guide and she and I just camped. It's so fun because she lives like 40 minutes from me and she'll just call me up and go, I can sneak away tonight. And we meet at this little state park a couple miles from her house, less than an hour from home on a Wednesday night. I'll say to my husband, you know what? I'm meeting Susie. I'm staying overnight. Just two of us sit there, start a campfire, cook two little petite filet mignons and just have a glass of wine and enjoy a night out with the girls and had, I don't even unhitch. Just drive back in the morning. No asparagus, <laughs> no broccoli, no Brussels sprouts. No, I do do asparagus. <laughs> That's great. Dawn, Dawn says you can use the blue one can be used to cut veggies. She won't let those veggies go. No, yeah, she won't let those veggies go. No, no. Well, it's, it's working for Dawn. <laughs> right, and Laurie and, Laurie and Michelle want the new weight distribution his system for their next RV. So they're gonna they're gonna sell their lands before they leave Arizona, mm -hmm. and then they're gonna buy a new camper next year. So she's been starting to look at new campers already. And she and I uh, talked the other morning, and I I was telling her about it, and I said, you know, I I was in a meeting with the Camco people when we were at RVX in March, and I was like, oh my gosh, you guys, I gotta do something. I is what am I doing wrong? I can't get that thing up in there. Wait, 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 wait. We got a new one for you. So it's, I'm so glad to have it now. Because this is a weight distribution hitch with a built-in anti-sway. So sometimes there'll be just a weight distribution hitch, sometimes an anti-sway, but they do make models that combine the two. So once I get those bars on and they're locked in place, I wrench it back and that's the anti-sway. 
Time to mean, I think it's important to point out that um, the weight distribution and the anti-sway, these are not decorative devices. These are life-saving devices. These Absolutely. are issues that if you're driving down the highway and do not have either of those units, um, mm -hmm. you're putting yourself at jeopardy. And other uh, people. Putting your life in jeopardy as well, because that unit can uh, run away from you. Uh, you hit a bri bridge joint or something like that and uh, it has a little bounce to it. And before you know it, it's flipped your truck around and uh, hit people we, coming I, in the opposite direction. I sure. absolutely was not going to have that installed. I mean, mm -hmm. my husband's a home inspector. is a pretty handy guy. Yeah. Um, we very rarely pay anyone to come to our house and do anything. But I'm like, no. And so um, – Matt, who runs the ease lift over there at Campco, he came over and installed it for me. And this is a guy who's done 100 of them. And he, I was watching him with the tape measure. And I don't, I can't even tell you why he was measuring the wheel well. I was trying to piece that all together. But it took him about 30, 35 minutes. And he really knows what he's doing. So I feel really confident it's put on right. Mm -hmm. John, why don't you go ahead and do your commercial? I'm Great. going to check the comments and see Great. if we're yeah, missing the comments are there. They're coming in good, and we want to take this moment to thank you all for watching uh, our show this evening and also to take time down below somewhere on your screen, whether you're watching it on a laptop, whether you're watching it on a on a, uh, um, <laughs> on a phone. What's that third thing called? An iPad? Uh, what do you call it? A tablet. A tablet. A tablet. <clears throat> to just take a moment and uh, hit the share button and allow us to reach all the people that uh, are interested in camping and just as importantly so many people that are just getting into um, a love of camping and uh, when they see shows like this with very interesting guests like janine and several of the other guests that we've had over the past couple of years um, they'll see that camping really is for everyone regardless of what your uh, economic status is regardless of whether you wear a blue collar or a white collar um, regardless of whether you're male, whether you're female, regardless of whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you have kids, don't have kids. Uh, how many, uh, like when the, when we see the people at um, the Good Sam people, um, I'm thinking of the Coles, they have one, two, three generations that go camping together. I know Lisa's parents that's come and, and that's um, so nice. you know, that's pretty cool. Where else are you going to get that? You're not going to get that in many other um recreational opportunities outside of camping. So well, and I think, you know, for, for what it costs you to take one, um, you know, resort vacation, that's a lot of camping days that you yep. could do for the same amount of money or for the, the, take that same amount of money. And your six day vacation at a resort is 18 or 20 days. If you're camping in state parks and you're really watching your budget, you can have so much more vacation for the buck. Yep. And just like you said, when you, when, uh, who was it that when Susie, Susie Q calls you and says, Hey, let's meet up halfway. Um, if you're going to a state park, whether you're in New Jersey or Pennsylvania, uh, what are you paying? 20 bucks, 30 bucks a night? 20 uh, bucks. And, and you know what else? I got to tell you this for a little secret about the girl campers. That RV is not just for camping. There isn't a girl camper out there who doesn't use her RV in her driveway or backyard all the time. It's a little she shed on wheels. It's your little getaway. It's a little respite place. Well, and in New England and the Northeast, because you know, Janine, you're from the Northeast. Uh, I know several years ago when we parked our unit, when we had our house, now mm -hmm. we're in a condo, so we have to store it somewhere. But there were several times when the power went off in the house and um, my mm -hmm. wife and I, and sometimes my daughter and her husband and, and child, came over because they had no heat in their homes, but we were able to power out with our, our propane. with our propane. And uh, we had heat. And, uh, just take coffee during storms. So um, people have a gas stove at home, don't know, with all these electric starters, you can't take a match to your gas stove at home anymore and light it. You can't yep. override it. Yep. Susie so says, my escape. But you know what, folks, That are those of you that are watching us now, uh, just let us know by sending in, in your little note here on the um you know, where it says, put in the comment, have you ever used your RV um, as a um, place to go during a storm when you had no power in your house? Let's just just see how many people. Um, That's probably about 100%. Do that. Yep. And Mark Cole, okay. why he was measuring the tires. So thank you, Mark. All right. Yeah. So Jason Jason Cole joined us. Uh, I suspect he's still oh, Jason, on the road. Jason, in, just talk I to him. I suspect he's on the road in uh, 
New York. Albany, who was yep. eating at a fine dining establishment up yep. there last night. Del Monaco. Jim Conboy with New England RV Roof. Hello, Jim. He's been busy. You've been posting some really nice shots of all those new roofs you've been putting on people's RVs, Jim. <laughs> Diane yeah. says, I use ours to quilt in when we are camping or at home. Yeah. I love that, Diane. It's Audrey. A, it's a little totally have. Jason says yes. Like, we got to give Jason. Uh, Jason's here now. I don't know if he was on last week, but they went camping the weekend after Thanksgiving when it was... I don't yeah, know, 10, 20, or 30 yeah. degrees. And they got home ago, just yeah. before the storm. Dawn, yep. absolutely, especially after hurricanes. There you go. See, regardless of what the natural calamity can be, um, there is an RV that has not necessarily a recreational use, but a um, functional use well so, beyond vacation. Yeah. Yep. So, Bob, you want to so tell well, people yeah. what you want to tell people how they can uh, winter the uh, winter, enter the contest for tickets because all it says is enter, but we're not telling them how. Well, but they're on they're on our Facebook page. So the cover photo on our Facebook page, if you click on that, it'll bring you to the contest page. And there's a couple of postings. Uh, Michelle posted a, we're doing an ad. We're running a sponsored ad this week to get more people to sign up, but that's on there. So it, several different places on our uh, thing. I will post, um, I'll post the link after the show in here. So that people have that, but uh, yeah, enter yeah. the contest, and you only have to win. Big thing, you only have to enter once because we keep everybody in the pool, and then we just select a new winner every week. But you don't have to enter every week; you just enter once, and you get a four pack of uh, tickets. Mm -hmm. Audrey says we fed an extension cord into the house from the motorhome generator, and it charged our phones and kept the space heater going for us. There you go. Oh, J oh, Jason says it was down to 14 degrees on that mm -hmm. last weekend that he was out there. Yeah. That's, that, that's kind of stretching the season a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we should but, also say, Audrey says, we fed an extension cord into the house. Uh, do we know what Audrey's husband does for a living? Yes. Yes. We do. But most yeah. people don't. <laughs> and he pro she probably plugged it in, and he probably unplugged, unplugged it. Because he's a firefighter. <laughs> He's a fireman. <laughs> fireman. So she, so he probably came Audrey. home and saw this this cord coming in from the motorhome into the house and, and immediately disconnected it. Right? Uh, Audrey, you hit the trifecta there. You broke like three three safety rules all at once in, at at one particular event. So give you credit for <laughs> consolidating. I think Audrey's husband was thinking at least the generator isn't in the house running. <laughs> or in the garage. Yeah, right. Exactly. Now, right. obviously, Michelle didn't listen to you either, John, because she's I got a side it. conversation going with Don. Yeah, we had hurricanes at Pat O'Brien's in New Orleans. Yeah. Okay, right. Don. Okay. I mean, okay. Right. okay. And, I, and I had my first hurricane at Pat O'Brien's in New Orleans in 1964. Bob, was it made with that stuff you're holding in your left hand right now? No, that was before I started drinking Jack Daniels. It was, <laughs> in fact, they're so, they're so sweet now, I couldn't drink a hurricane now. That was when I was a young a young lad in the Air Force. And mm. uh, it was I, I just remember it was so sweet, I couldn't can't picture drinking it now. So but, when you, but when you're 19 and you don't have any money and you're in the service, the hurricane's probably, I think we paid a buck for them. But every year we're special. You take what you get. They take what you right. Yeah. Now, now, now I can be more selective. And mine was the tequila sunrise. No, no, no. I couldn't choke that down now to save my life. <laughs> choke it down. Hey, Janine, um, a lot of people go to the website, that type of thing. Um, does it cost anything to belong to your organization? Or you just go to no, it and, uh, no, and you hang out? No membership with Girl Camper. Okay. No. Our goal is to get women out there, to give them the information they need to get out there, to provide opportunities for them to meet other people and go camping. And so, no, free, free, free. Who's your oldest and who's your youngest um, women that have been out, out on the road with you? Well, gosh. That's a great, that's a great question. Yeah. So my Aunt Sue. Unless, unless she's the oldest. My Aunt Sue lives up by you guys. She lives in Gardner, Massachusetts. Oh, 20 miles um, up the street. 
Yeah, and uh, my Aunt Sue is a dynamo. She's 84 years old. She just got back from a trip to Sri Lanka. She has been in 64 countries. After her husband passed away, she scaled down from the Class C. No, she had a fifth wheel, got rid of that, got a Class C, went across the country seven times and up to Alaska twice. So I love I love going out with my Aunt Sue, and I, I believe she's 83 or 84. And we have the Susie Q's daughter here is just finished renovating her own pop-up. She bought it with her money for a hundred bucks. And with her mom's help, the two of them renovated it. And, and Emma is 17 and camps with us in her own pop-up. And I love that so much. That's great. That's, That's pretty great. cool. And yeah, she's old she's enough. the old block. And she's barely old enough to drive anything to tow it with. Yeah, she just right. she just started because, driving, but she's had Susie for a mother. So I mean, she cut her teeth young. This kid is a do-it-yourselfer, like Susie is, and so she. Um, I can't wait to see how Emma inspires a generation because she comes from an age now. She isn't a Gen X. I guess she's a millennial. Um, I don't know what seventeens are. They're Gen X. They're they're under the millennials. But anyway. Her whole generation is with the thumbs in their face and a phone, yeah. and Emma yeah. is not like that. And so I love seeing Emma inspire the young women in her age group. Because you got to admit. Have, what else do you have on the couch? What's that, Bob? What else do you have on the couch? What else do I have on the couch? Oh, okay. Here's one of my favorite Camp Co things. Isn't this a fantastic tote bag? Let me see if I could get it here. Yep. Life is better at the campsite. So I'm teasing them today because this canvas tote bag, I said, I know. I know this was designed by a woman at Camco because I love the size of it. This has a plastic lining in it. So if you take this to the camp shower, you can throw your wet towel in it. It's not going to soak through and make your canvas moldy. All the stitches on it are double stitched and the, the straps are very wide, but one of the things I really love about it is inside it has a little zipper pocket. You know when you're at a campground and you have to pay 25 cents to take a shower? And then you're walking over with no place to put your quarters. So I love this because I use mine all the time and then I'm not trying to dig in the bottom of it and find my quarters. So this thing has just been so handy. We used them all summer long. I had, there's like four or five different designs. I keep losing them because mm. people come up and say, I love that. And I say, you can have it. I can get a new one. So I, I restocked today when I was at Campco. But this is my favorite design. And I got to meet the women at Campco today who came up with all of the designs for their plates and their dishes and their bags. And it was a thrill to meet them. So hey, basically, with that plastic liner, you can take it to the Piggly Wiggly or the Publix and buy meat with it, too. <laughs> hey, speaking, so speaking we're, of, talk. We're, you, we're going out for steak when I'm in Boston, right? Yeah, oh, oh, absolutely. There's seafood. Mm -hmm. have the, we'll mm -hmm. invite Do Dawn. Like, if Dawn... Like yeah. she's, like, no, she's not going to be up here. Do you like... Do you like Morton's? Is it Morton's right around the corner from? Uh, oh, I love, and we don't have that by us. I love. No. All right, then, then we'll oh, go on. Uh, I thought Del Fresco was a little Saturday bit. Saturday night we'll go to, uh, we'll go to Morton's. It's right around the corner from the uh, ex exhibition center. So count, count That's that in, and then Cosmopolitan. The <laughs> and, and then they'll have that. And then what we'll do is we'll we'll take a group picture of the three of us. With the Eating steaks steak. in front of us, and and you know, text it over to Don. <laughs> we'll do that. Yeah, but Bob, so, I'll get a I'll get a side of broccoli. Yeah, and it'll <laughs> it'll stay on the table. You were talking about dishes, and I I watched your uh, go RVing live today, and I I took a couple of snapshots, uh, screenshots in case we had to use them tonight, but. Talk about that line of dishware that they've got. I love those. They're super cute, aren't they? I didn't bring those with me because I actually have two sets at home already. So they're that 1950s melamine, you know, when that came out in the 1950s. But yep. what I love about them is they're thinner than what you can usually find in the department stores now. So they stack really nice. They're lightweight. They don't use a lot of, of space in your cabinet. You can drop those things and nothing happens to them. And the designs are super we, cute. We still, we still have a lot of them. Yep. 
Oh, yeah. And the bowls that come with those are bowls that actually hold stuff. They're big enough to have um, a bowl of chili in with all the fix-ins, and they, they actually have space in them. I find that sometimes the bowls are just too small. So I love those dishes, and they just came out with a third design. Hmm. Okay, now here's, here's something else that you had in the show. I don't know if you brought it tonight, but I thought that was very clever. No, I didn't bring that home with me because um, because my husband was looking. <laughs> and so our, you can't even believe what our garage looks like. So um, I have so many of those at home, I didn't bring it with me. But again, that's one of those things that's made right there in their factory. We stood there yesterday watching those come off the line. And they come in like 10 or 12 different really bright and cheery colors, but they have some muted colors as well. When that thing is folded up, it's really narrow. So you can have three or four of them, and those, they're so handy. Next you know, they've got, I've, got to, I've got to check their site, and I've got to check some of their displays at our Nerve to Dealers because right. I, took, I took one look at that today and immediately said to myself, it must be mass-produced in China. The nope. fact that it's made in the USA, I hope they're promoting that. 100% because people want to buy stuff that's yeah. made in America. I can tell you if it's plastic and it came from Campco, it was made in North Carolina. Wow. Yeah. That's so, yeah, it's so fun to be there watching the stuff come off the line and seeing the machine that makes their hoses yesterday. It was fascinating. You know, I well, think that next time you talk to their marketing people, you should tell them that John and Bob said they should promote the fact that this is American made because. 99% of the stuff that you see in, in a lot of the camp stores are mm -hmm. not by other brands. I think that, you know what, yeah. uh, Bob, are you agree with me that that's a, a campers are American people you know, who love America. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I'm not talking politically here, but. Right. No, but I think, they're missing, I think they're missing the boat with that. Did you? Well, I think it, they do talk about that, but did you see us talk about that big Karatuk um, cooler? It'll hold ice for seven to ten days. It's so cool and well designed, and that's made right in North Carolina here. And you could get them in your team colors. So oh, team colors, you, okay. Yeah. I they have a bunch of different colors, so if you follow a specific sports team, you might want to get one for tailgating in your team's colors. What are the New England Patriots? What's their color? Blue and uh, white. Red, white, white, blue. Red. red, white, blue. I got them all. <laughs> yeah, it's it was really, really fun to be there. And I, you know, I, I had I took a picture of it, but I may not have oh wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think no, I I had a picture of it. That's funny. I don't know where it went. Maybe I maybe I didn't download that one. But here's, here's another thing that I had downloaded. Oh, Mark says he has that table and he uses it all the time. Well, yeah, you know, and, I have a couple of them. And wouldn't you agree with me? People will spend more money if it's made in America. If, I will. If I've got one of those tables made in America – and a Chinese one next to it, mm -hmm. I'm going to buy the American unit. And, and to John's right. point, right. Camping, yeah, and, camping and RVing is a homegrown sport and a homegrown yeah. industry. Would you yeah. believe it's 758 already? That went fast. <laughs> God. Uh, your, not, poor husband not gonna... not like your, your husband only has to stay out of the room for another minute. <laughs> well, the game is over. He was watching the game Monday night here with pouring rain when um philadelphia was playing the giants just like sheeting rain yeah. so there's nothing on he wants to watch tonight so he's all good <laughs> yep yep thursday night football is the night so yeah. we want to thank you so much we're looking forward to boston uh, audrey you got to come up on a, audrey you got to meet um janine and maybe she'll call you up on stage and say hey you are the one who does all the planning in your house as far as where you're going to go and what you're going to do and who you're going to invite and everything else. And uh, maybe you should have some kind of little panel up there with New England women. We're not telling you what to do, but we're just suggesting. You know what? I very say, powerful women here. I love that about you guys when I said to Bob, what do you want me to talk about? And he said, whatever you want. Mm, yeah. Okay. We're going to talk. We're going to have a segment on girl campers. 
Yep. And then we'll probably talk about things that people need to know uh, to avoid making a mistake when they're making an RV purchase. And, and I've done a lot on that where people fall in love at the show, but I want them to stop and think, is this countertop going to work for you? How do I cook? I, you know, is this bed? Stand in the shower, walk around. So we'll probably be talking about some of that too. Mm, that's fantastic. If anybody's going to buy it that night, don't dissuade them. Right. <laughs> and we'll, uh, they get the right one. And we'll uh, be sure to make sure that our dealers watch this before the show and we'll come up with a couple of dealers so that in the spring we can have you back for a couple of girl camper colleges. And we really look forward to having you up here. So I enjoy, can... in, enjoy the Christmas holidays. And, uh, yes, we will and thank you, you so and, much. It's only a month away. Any, any, any last words for our fans? I just want to say, hey, head over to girlcamper.com because we've got a great giveaway going on, too, with our friends at Golden Rabbit, a $500 giveaway for gorgeous enamel wear that is very glampy. It's red plaid. It's gorgeous. So you can pick $500 worth of stuff at um, Golden Rabbit. So head over to girlcamper.com and sign up and be a subscriber. Someone's going to win. Well, tell them how they can win your trailer. Well, oh, yeah, that too. So you'll see our pop up. So Forest River has donated a 2020 196 brand new. We took it from factory to fabulous. That video is over on Go RVing. So head over to Go RVing and look what we did to take that RV from factory to fun. And you could buy $10 tickets. Someone's going to win that raffle on Valentine's Day 2020. That's fantastic. John, any last words before no, we head looking out? Looking forward to Boston and. Um... Oh, we should tell people that the week of Christmas, we can still say Christmas, right? Christmas yeah. and New Year's, which both both Christmas and New Year's are on Wednesdays this year. Wow. And there's so much stuff going on that, Bob, if we decided we're going to move our Wednesday night shows to Monday nights. Uh, yeah, that those two, those two uh, weeks, yeah. We don't, we don't want to miss it for two weeks, and yep. we have such great fans, so we're going to do Monday, yeah. and we'll be – putting the notices up there, but we'll do it yep. Monday of Christmas week and Monday of the 23rd week. and the 30th. So next right. week, what's today? Yeah. So we'll we're okay. See, we're okay for next Wednesday. We'll yeah. see you here next Wednesday. And then the following two weeks, we go to Mondays and, uh, um, plan your weekend, plan your weeks around our show. And thank you so much. Fantastic. All right, guys. See you down the road. Thank you. Everybody. Good night. Bye-bye.